Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's football show sponsored by Arnold Clark. I'm Peter Martin. It is Thursday. Thank you to each and every one of you uh, for the ever-growing numbers we're getting on this YouTube channel. Now, lots of people tuning in to watch the football here. The, all the discussion in the company of, as ever, my sidekick, Alan Ruff. And I've been criticising Ruffy for more than a few years about the gear that he's wearing. But I think the heat is definitely off him now with Tam Cowan here in the studio. We'll discuss that. Uh, and whether it's groundbreaking or indeed a major mistake. But first of all, here's what's on the menu. Yeah, lots to talk about, of course, international football. Mm -hmm. Some people love it when there's a break to support your country. We can all say we. Um, but then some people are just so used to club football that they're not really into the international scene. Which department do you fall into? Well, I can only speak as a Motherwell fan, Peter, and uh, in the back, uh, two really impressive wins against Hamilton Aki's away and then Hibs at home. In both games, I'd never watched a Motherwell team dominate a match uh, as much as that. Um, there's a wee bit of me saying, oh, I wish we'd done a few weeks yet for the internationals, you know, keep the momentum going. But, you know, uh, we're all choking, absolutely choking, champing at the bit to get to our finals. It's been a long, long, long time. So I'm just as uh, keen to get these games underway, see what Stevie Clark can, can bring. But i um, quietly confident about the weekend. Yeah, last week I mentioned that I'd, I'd <laughs> tipped at the start of the season Motherwell to finish fourth. Uh, are you are you getting that kind of a same optimism I have about Stephen Robinson's side? Well, you also tipped a uh, two-each final result in the old firm <laughs> fixture last week. <laughs> and uh, you were in the close. One of the worst games in living memory. I've got to laugh at guys like yourself who probably trot out the rubbish about it being the greatest derby in the world. You know, watching Derby County would have been better um, you know um, I thought it was an appalling game uh, but Stephen Robinson yep uh, it's weird to think as well that you know there was that wee wobble with him uh, just over a year ago after we'd been absolutely slaughtered at Ibrox 7-1 a few fans on his back but you need to be realistic to look at the bigger picture you know Muddle we can't just pick and choose who we bring in we've got crowds of four and a half five thousand I think he's doing admirably well. Yeah, I, I think a more important issue before we get on to the international scene, Ruffy, is uh, sometimes, and I think this is the demise of towns and cities across Scotland, some people actually go and actually look at what they're going to buy. I know you travel a great distance to buy your gear. Now it's just on mail order. Has it changed your mind today? <laughs> no, no I, I'm, I'm up for the challenge. You know, I'll get, get worse than that in the wardrobe, trust me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You, only, you only need to look at his 1971 cell. <laughs> Celebration yeah. outfit after one of your there, there, there is only one of us, though, it has been spent the morning chopping down trees, you know, <laughs> and, and it was not me. <laughs> so the uh, main issue, um, I think, this week, which has really dogged the headlines, and, and we've tried to take it on day by day, and I think we've reached that positive point of when you get something that really uh, so many people uh, are actually sickened by the, the shout out to Scott Brown as he's coming out of Ibrox, what you get 24 hours and 48 hours later, uh, uh, you know, with these significant events is the decent people raise their voices. Because Absolutely. I think people who are moronic hog the headlines, Tam. Absolutely. I even saw something in social media this morning. There was a touch of what about her? Yeah. Um, it was a Rangers fan saying after Stuart, Robins, uh, Stuart Robertson apologising to Celtic and Scott Brown for that dullard's behaviour. Then folk were saying, oh, when's uh, Celtic going to apologise for a lighter being chucked in the pitch, for yeah. comments about him, for songs about him? And the guy was immediately shot down. Yeah. They were saying, look, forget all that. We're talking about this and uh, it's now, it's up to date. It happened the other day. Forget it in the past. This was completely beyond the pale. Uh, shut up. Yeah. And, and that's the way it should have been. I think every day in this, with the exception of the perpetrator for the outset, 
has been magnificent. The restraint shown by Scott Brown, the intervention, if you like, even by Rangers fans there on the day, telling the guy in no uncertain terms that he was an idiot. The police stepping in immediately. And then, of course, Stuart Robertson picking up the phone and uh, speaking to Celtic. You know, we, we, we are making strides, it yeah. would appear, in Scottish football. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Uh, the one thing, and I, I'm not suggesting for a minute it's going to be controversial, what I'm going to suggest now, but quite simply... That deals with all the incidents, all the stages of it, Ruffy. For me personally, this is a 15-year-old boy. Um, I think he'll regret what he said. He's had a lifetime ban from Rangers, which is the right uh, form of action. I think he'll regret that uh, as time goes on. But I, I don't think it should be you know, something that he has to live with without trying to take something positive out of it. I think we should be then looking at the police and authorities to say, right, how can you sit down and educate that boy, the misdemeanor, educate him, and then say to him, this is the way you act, this is the way you move forward. That's how you solve yeah. problems, Ruffy. You know, yeah. he's been castigated, and rightly so, but there has to be some kind of positive, you know, pathway out for this boy. Yeah, they, there's no doubt about that. I mean, he's only a young lad, he's got his whole life in front of him. I, I would like to think, in light of what he said, uh, there's a lot of remorse there, uh, the older he gets, he'll, he'll have to deal with it. But let's not kid ourselves on, there's not just pe one person out there, there's lots of people like that. Yeah. You know, there's lots and lots that, you know, you, you would have to say lead by example, look at the punishment, and you would like to think that some common sense would say, well, up. That could have been me, Aye. you know, and, and I need to change my, I need to change everything I'm doing here. Yeah. I'm still amazed, to be honest, with that, a 15 year old boy, and every 15 year old, my my eight year old is uh, savvy when it comes to social media and all the rest of it. I couldn't believe that a 15 year old boy for a start wouldn't realise that it'd be people in that scenario outside Ibrook Stadium when the Celtic players are going onto the bus. Yeah with their cameras everywhere. Yeah. Uh, so the guy could maybe, they would have been taught a wee bit about that as well. But he's a 15-year-old boy. Nobody would ever make a single excuse for him, but there's hope for the young boy, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, listen, on the field of play, Rangers have got a blow uh, on the injury front with John Flanagan. Um, looks as if he's going to have to go a bit of surgery, Ruffy. Uh, you, I mean, he's tried to build that squad up to get people in, but suddenly you're thinking to yourself, well, Barisic, now it looks as if Andy Halliday might have to drop in there and help out. Yeah, and it'll be a massive blow for Stephen Gerrard because he actually pointed out that Flanagan was the only person that he could get past marks to at the weekend. So he thought very, very highly of him. So, yep, yeah, it just shows you that uh, the more cover you get now, the, the better it is. So he's going to be missed. Yeah, and do, I, do we know what happened to, to the player involved? Uh, Flanagan. Flanagan, uh, yeah. It's a hernia. What's the hell now? Yeah, so um, the other thing I was going to say to it's you... It's like maybe a 50-50 with Jordan Jones in training or yeah. something like that, you know? <laughs> no, I mean, that's a double whammy. The, I think the good news for Rangers, Tam, is he's not as bad as first fear. Right. So he... Because he... that was ridiculous. If there was a guy that went to a club, and the big thing for Kilmarnock fans, I've been there as a Motherwell fan when one of your players goes to Rangers or Celtic, and the, your biggest fear is that the guy is going to come back and absolutely roast you. He's going to be dynamite. He looked sensational under Stevie Clark. Of that, there's no doubt. Yeah. And for him to get involved in that stupidity and the old firm game and, you know, risk his own career at Rangers, it was, it was absolutely crazy. Yeah, well, I have to be honest with you, his cross ball in the game against Legia, which gave Morelos yep, the win yep. in the 90th minute, was sublime. That's why I thought Stephen Gerrard would start with him and they'd have a go at Celtic. Well, that's why when, when the camera out. flashed to... Stephen Gerrard there in the dugout the minute Jones went in the challenge he just he just sat and shook his head yeah. and that summed it up yeah absolutely um, but across the city uh, Christopher Julian saying he, you know he's he's wise to those little moves Ruffy which you know go, goes yeah. on after the game there was video footage of Morelos going into the box and just standing on Christopher Julian's foot just to try and annoy him and then maybe a flashpoint then maybe a red card it's amazing I mean Listen, everybody's been singing the praise of Morelos because he seems to calm down, but there's still that wee edge to him. Lots of players do that. Mm -hmm. Try and needle somebody. Yeah, I mean, obviously in the dressing room, you, you identify players who can be wound up, and you've obviously got somebody in your team who can do that. And it's up to the individual to sort of uh, respond to anything that goes on. I, I actually never noticed the Morelos one. I think in the light of Celtic winning and everything, nobody was wanting to talk about it, but he's... He's, he's always he, he, these kind of players don't just say right that's it I'm going to clean up my act there's yeah. always a spark there there's always something that's going to ignite them at the wrong time 
Yeah. Well, if that's your makeup, that's your makeup. Yeah. But I think he deserves credit for actually the way he's behaved since the start of the yeah, season. Absolutely. I think, yeah. see, I think he sat down with the manager, Tam. They've had a word and said, "Look, you either toe the line here, or you're going to be yeah. sent off." And Gerard says uh, that if he brings his A game to the table and forgets all the daftness, nobody will be able to touch him. And I go back to it, when you think how important a goal it was against Legia <clears> Warsaw. There's a lot of centre forwards, a lot of strikers who could have been an end of that cross, as great a cross as it was, who would still have put it past the post. You know, and that for me showed his quality in a nutshell. But in the eve of the game, um, and I'll no name drop, I was I was talking to a former Rangers player, somebody who certainly would be considered a Rangers legend, who knows football inside out, and he said to me that Neil Lennon wouldn't be doing his job if he didn't tell his own players to wind Morelis up. If Morelis had been playing for the start, yeah. because as Alan says, there's always that wee that wee bit in somebody's makeup. Yeah. It's still in there somewhere if you just rattle them and this gentleman I was speaking to says Neil Lennon wouldn't be doing his job because it's a sacking offence yeah. if he doesn't <clears> tell the guys in the dressing room mind rumble him up a wee bit because he might take the bait and get sent off absolutely wasn't yeah. it Terry Hurlock was it no <laughs> I, 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 said, I, said, I said Rangers legend <laughs> uh, just on that we're going to switch our attention to uh, Scotland because there's two crucial double headers coming up against Russia and uh, Belgium we'll get Tam's thoughts on that we're going to have an argument Tam almost certainly will be head to head with me. Uh, Ruffy, maybe not as much with regards to I've picked the greatest ever Scotland team in my eyes. You might uh, beg to differ on it. You can get your thoughts on that as well. Um, but before that, let's have a look at a very easy quiz. It's an easy quiz. You can win yourself a, a T-shirt from the PLZ team uh, background and also in your colours of your favourite team as well. So we've had lots of people winning those T-shirts. Good luck with the quiz. We'll announce the winner uh, tomorrow on the programme. Incidentally, uh, we're going to give you our all-time greatest Scotland 11, but Scotland against Russia is our <laughs> more immediate problem. Boy, I wish we had the 11 players that I'm about to name to you. But first of all, here's what we have as the possible 11 that's going to start against Russia. Ruffy, Tam, have a look. What do you think? Marshall and goal, O'Donnell, Mulgrew, Cooper, Robertson, then McTominay, McGinn and McGregor, uh, Forrest, McBurney and Fraser. I'm looking right away. We know <laughs> we... <sighs> We don't have a lot of great centre halves to, to to pick on, but I'm sure Mulgrew and Cooper, if they indeed do start, they're, they're certainly 100% guys. I, I would I would absolutely credit them with that. Would they have an embarrassment to Richie's in midfield? I would certainly because I think he's 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 in fire this season already. Uh, after coming back for what looked like a hellishly serious injury, uh, Ryan Christie. I think I would have plonked him in there, absolutely. Whereabouts? And uh, just, just right in the middle of the park. Yeah. And again, I'm a bit old-fashioned with stuff like When I see a guy that's been playing as well as him, I know you can't do that, and you certainly can't do it at an international level now, but he's the sort of player to say, away you go out and enjoy yourself. Yeah. You're playing at Hamden, you're pulling on the dark blue of Scotland, you go out there in the middle of the pitch and just let's see a wee bit of magic for you. And I, and I think he might relish that. Um, Who do you take out then? Up front. Um, I would take one of the centre halves out and go for a slightly. I'd play just the three at the back, maybe, and go for a mere attack minded uh, formation. But, uh, you know, it's because we could, uh, uh, you know, there, there, there are that great, uh, great midfielders rather in the team. I'm um, saying we're no maybe too hot at the back and up front you are wondering about the goals, which is why I'll reinforce my point about Ollie McBurney. I think that he has got a point to prove yeah. in front of the Tartan Army. He's apologised to his teammates. He's apologised to Stevie Clark. The apology to the Tartan Army would be a winning goal against Russia and then Belgium. Yeah, listen, I think he'd get the freedom of the whole of the country. If he managed that, if we got six points, we'd, we'd probably get a national holiday off you the next day. Everybody would be off work. Yeah, six points would be just unthinkable. Uh, and it would be put a smile on everybody's face. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just out of curiosity, Ruff, you're probably best placed uh, to give us your thoughts on this because of um, the debacles that have gone before. Um, Robert Snodgrass mentioned that they want to improve the standards. They want, they're now playing at a level where 
even small margins, small percentages in preparation can make such a huge difference. And the players have been consulted. They've talked to the SFA about it. There's a, a blueprint and to overhaul the standards. They're now in the Orium rather than out at Mar Hall where the grass was causing problems. They've got all the professional backup they need. Is, is that... Could that just 1% or 2% make the difference, or is it still down to ability? Yeah, for me, I'm old school. You know, you've either got it or you've no got it. Uh, players like Jimmy Johnson, Ken Dalglish, didn't train in pristine parks or train or whatever, but they still had the ability to go in the park. I know we all want to play or be in a perfect position, but I, I just think players now are too precious. I really do. I, I think excuses... They're getting thrown out are ridiculous and this cover up of McBurney, you know, well we had a meeting and everything's fine and everything's okay. Everything won't be fine as far as the Tartan Army's concerned. These players should learn that it's a privilege to pull on that jersey, as Tam said, and just get out and do it and stop throwing out excuses. So what, what would you have done with McBurney then? Would you have pulled him out of the squad the minute he was caught on video? I wouldn't have been covering it off for him. I wouldn't have been giving him a, a, a PR exercise to get out of it, you know, and... What is said is said. I don't believe people say that in jest. Yeah. Do you, think, really the player, do you think that some of, well, some of your players would definitely have sorted them out? Yeah, of course they would. Soonest yeah. or something like that would have, would have had something to say about it. It wouldn't have been sort of a fobbed off of the way it was or it was just a wee throwaway line. Yeah. You know, you don't throw away lines like that when you're talking about your national team. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, one line that's usually, <clears throat> you know, quickly jotted out <clears throat> by more than a few uh, when they go to the press conference is about the potential of getting a victory and uh, Scott McTominay looks as if he's going to start in the midfield and he says they've uh, definitely got to try and get those three points with an attacking outlook towards Russia. Yeah, we're not going to settle for anything less than us going and having a right goal, but obviously that's up to the manager and, and the coaching staff with how they set us up and, and the different ways that they want to approach the game. And as I say, all the players are fully bought into everything the new gaff is saying and, and all of his ways on and off the pitch are, are, are different. And, the, and, it's, and it's obviously really positive to have somebody of, of that magnitude managing the national team. And it's, it's exciting, as I said. Yeah, I mean, I've listened, we've heard it all before, all the great gusto of about how they're, what they're going to do, but I actually think the one thing, we will have a well-organised side under Steve Clark. Well, again, for anybody that doesn't fancy Scotland to get a result against Russia and Belgium, think how many people didn't fancy Kilmarnock under Stevie Clark to yeah. get some of the results that he got, primarily against Celtic and Rangers, where for a spell there he had a terrific... Uh, record against the clubs. So that's what I'm hoping Stevie Clark brings to the party. And again, I always feel, and I mentioned it last week in the programme, I think it's ever so slightly unfair for anybody to have the temerity to try and pick holes in Stevie Clark's squad when we were all wanting the guy in there to do the job. So for goodness sake, let's let's give the man a chance. Let him go on with it, irrespective of who he wants to put in that squad. And this suddenly, this double header is the, the real challenge starts here for Stevie Clark. And I'm, I'm fascinated just to see how this will happen. I've got, a, I've got a real positive feeling that we might get something out of it. I have tipped two draws. I think that would be delightful. Yeah. When you look at what happened the last time Belgium played us, OK, it was a friendly and all the rest of it, uh, but we got absolutely slaughtered by them. They looked amazing. I'm a wee bit worried. I know what happened domestically. You remind me of the club and the player. Um, I'm a wee bit worried at international level at the Belgian boss is uh, maybe at the, at the madam with Hazard. Yeah, Eden um, Hazard. He might actually play. Yeah. Uh, you know, what happened domestically, was it, was it Derek McInnes tried to pull a similar stunt with he Sam Cosgrove, Cosgrove in yeah. Europe? Right? Maybe there's a wee bit of that going on, because that guy is just sensational. He's absolutely dynamite. But I, I, I really have faith, a lot of faith, and uh, Stevie Clark, and let's just see what you <clears> know. Well, his assistant Stephen Reid uh, emphasised the fact that this is a really tight-knit squad they have. I think a togetherness. Um, atmosphere is really good. I think I mentioned it when I was last over about the sim similarities in maybe characters and personnel to the squads I was involved in with the, the Republic of Ireland. I think that, that needs to be the same. It needs to be every camp needs to be one where the, the players are looking forward to coming in. And, and that can take you a long way. Um, at times, the spirit and the, the camaraderie we had as, a, as an island squad was was part of the reason that we got results and I think that's going to be crucial again in this this setup
Yeah, well, Stephen Reid was part of a, an Ireland squad that had more than a, a, a few successful uh, forays into qualifiers and then eventually making it to major championships. Let's hope some of his uh, skills rub off on the players as well. Uh, what about Russia? Some people thinking we should beat them, we should get three points at home. Uh, Russia have got a good pedigree, as our reporter Gabriel Antoniazzi found out. Russia, hosts of the 2018 World Cup and winners of the inaugural European Championships back in 1960. But what else should Scotland fans know about Friday night's visitors? Last summer's tournament was the country's best finisher to World Cup since leaving the Soviet Union behind, and they continued their impressive form. Since then, they've won six of their ten matches. They only finished behind Sweden on goal difference in their Nations League table, and are currently second in Group I, behind Belgium having won three out of their four Euro 2020 qualifiers, including a 9-0 victory over San Marino. And despite all of this, they are ranked 46th in the world, only one place ahead of Scotland. So will it be a tight game? Well, it was the previous times these two sides met in Euro 96 qualifying. Both matches ended up a draw. And who should Steve Clark watch out for? Alexander Golovin is their duel in midfield and makes them tick, whereas captain Artem Juba is their target man and goalscorer. He got three at the World Cup and already has five in Euro 2020 qualifying. The Russians will be desperate to take all three points and a step closer to a home draw at the Euros in St. Petersburg. So there you are. We're going to have to battle if we're going to get three points. <coughs> Does anyone out there in the Tartan Army think we're going to get three points against Belgium? Um, if you want to actually give us that prediction and we spot it on YouTube and you get the right score, I think we might be sending you uh, a T-shirt as well. Here's hoping it's well worthy of a T-shirt if we beat uh, Belgium and Russia. Um, just before we go, uh, let's go back to those Halcyon days. I've picked the all-time greatest Scotland eleven. Boy, I wish we had them all now. Um, my apologies to Ruffy. Uh, you know, it's it's tight between three goalkeepers that I think are the best that Scotland have produced <coughs> uh, over the piece. Um, Ruffy's up there. Uh, so is Jim Layton. But I got to apologise, Ruffy. I've gone for I've gone for Andy Gorham. Yeah, the biggest point is, do I get a seat on the bench? Yes, <laughs> I'm you, up do, the stand. you get a seat. <laughs> you're, you're in. Here's the team. Um, what do you think, Tam, of this uh, eleven that I've picked? Right. Basically, you're picking holes right away. You think McLeish and Miller. I, I don't think you can have McLeish without Miller. It's you know it's Laurel without Hardy, Peters without Lee. You need to get the two of them in there. <laughs> I, I don't think. Uh, I, and I, I like though what you've done. You fed uh, McLeish with Hansen. Yeah. Because you want to know what happens if you have Miller with Hansen, <laughs> right? Ruffy, so you I can, know. I can see where you're going there, but no, you need to have you need to have McLeish and Miller together. Ruffy, I can't let you go with it. I always like to ask you this, and I know Tom wants the answer. Why, why, oh why, didn't you take Shen Galia out when those two ran into each other? Because we might still have won the game without you in goal. Yeah. Well, basically, I'd have been the person that gets sent off, and that's yeah. the only thing people were remembered. They would have remembered they two banging into each other. Yeah, that's no, a fair so, shout. That's so, a good... you know, these are things you've got to think of when he's coming through. <laughs> Tam, Tam and I... <laughs> give it yourself. Tam and I were at high school, and I'm almost certain Tam was in his Lanarkshire house, same as me. <clears throat> when he's running through, I'm thinking, Ruffy, take Shengelia out, take the red card, and let's build it from there, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, if you'd have done that for your country, we might have been <laughs> in the knockout stages where we could have got battered by another good team like Brazil, <laughs> but that's just another point. Anyway, on that note, fingers crossed, uh, we're getting uh, Scotland winning against Russia, and who knows what can happen against Belgium. If you want to give us your thoughts, you can across all the social media outlets that we're posting there, of course, Twitter. We're on Instagram as well as PLZ Soccer, uh, and on the YouTube channel, if you subscribe, you will see night by night, Monday to Friday, the ever-growing audience of people tuning in uh, near and far. Thank you very much to each and every one of you from across the globe. Uh, we'll get people in Vietnam, we'll get people uh, sitting on beaches on holiday watching the programme and staying loyal to us. So thank you to each and every one of you. Tell your friends, share it and subscribe on YouTube. From Ruffy, Tam and myself, thanks for watching.
Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com.